If you can't be in the field chasing gun dogs, the next best thing is talking about it. Join Wade and Thomas as we discover the people, the places, and the birds, and of course, the gun dogs that make upland hunting our passion. This is the Center Tales Podcast. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to this episode of the Setter Tales Podcast, episode 47. And um, we want to make sure that we uh, talk about our sponsorships. Uh, we have uh, we want to talk about Highland Hunting that's going to be sponsoring this episode. And a uh, place uh, kind of dear to uh, Thomas and my heart. We spend a lot of time down there in the, in, during the season. Great place to go, Riverside, Iowa, if you want to see some, uh, some, some birds uh, in a setting where it's uh, – I wouldn't say it's controlled, but you know we we liberate the birds, and so they've got uh, they got a fair chance. And some days they beat us. I mean that's just the honest <laughs> truth. And uh, so we try to make it as much uh, like a wild bird hunt as we can. And some days it is. It's more like a wild bird hunt. And some <laughs> days we they beat us. So, but uh, it's lots of lots of fun. Good place to go. So and thank thank them for uh, taking care of us. Um, you know, we got a couple good things we want to get going, and we're going to have like a what's a puppy update? You know, we got some puppies on the ground right now. Thomas yeah, does. They are four weeks old now, so we're we've uh, graduated from the whelping box into a big swimming pool because they are sloppy. So there's oh, there's wow. one of the little girls there that uh, still looking for a home. Look at that. She is. Uh, there's another one. <laughs> She's. Uh, they they we introduced him to the outside yesterday. It was been so hot, you know, and we thought, well, we'll let him out. And there's our little guy. He's uh, he's he's small, but he's mighty. So he's uh, he's looking for a place too. And you know, funny thing about him, you know, CJ's got a solid brown head and specks everywhere, and he's just got that little black at the end of his ears. And he's got one little dot on his cheek, but he's. I oh, uh, think he's going to be full white, pretty much. I think I think there's ticking. We're starting to yeah. see some ticking on the feet, and yeah, he's got ticking on his belly, and and uh, beautiful pups. Yeah, they're they're doing well. Mom and dad are they've got a heck of a system now. They got a bushel basket. They can take them outside. And yesterday we weren't too crazy well, about. Tell being. your mom and dad I know why I'm bringing my litter. <laughs> when, when, I, when the time comes. I don't think that's going to work, <laughs> but um, they've been really pushing the. You know, we. First uh, solid food yesterday. I was up there, spent that day with them, and and I put that food in that bowl, and they got a whiff of that milk a little bit, and heck, they ate it like crazy, and then they all bellies were all full, and they went and laid down for a little bit, and so we took them out first time in the grass, you know, so they weren't too wild, and they weren't too sure about it, and there's a male that uh, he's going to Kentucky. He's gonna he's gonna be a horseback dog, so Ooh. he. Uh, I was in cleaning and, and scrubbing some stuff and cleaning up and messing with the other puppies and uh, and he was out there just tail straight up pointing. I thought, well, he's got a brain, you know, they all got brains and, and then they had him out today. My nieces had him out in the grass today while we were here and they've been sending me pictures yeah, and he's got uh... they all were pointing at leaves and they were throwing balls across the lawn for him and they were just watching, you know, so they're growing. They are growing, so okay. we're excited. Very He's excited. Got his so. mama's speed. He'll be good, uh, good horseback dog for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, sometimes when just in in the travels and the people that we know, you come across some some interesting uh, things. And and we got a cool guest tonight, mm -hmm. and it's something uh, that I had never really thought about or heard of. And you had a friend that had a situation where they they lost a dog in the field, and that can happen to any of us. And you know, I've been really lucky as you have that. Uh, when we have had a dog that strayed, that we were able to at least find them at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, but in case you you can't, let's talk a little bit. Uh, give us a little insight on our guest that we have tonight. So we have Bill Dedick from Waterloo, Iowa. He's Iowa Drone Search and Rescue. So um, long story short, my friend Kurt, uh, they let their dog out one night and just let him out of the house. And he's fully trained. He's wing and shot. Nice Brittany mm -hmm. and. His wife's best, you know, he's their companion, and they let him out to go potty, and he just disappeared. And we looked, you know, for a couple of days, they were putting up signs and, and weren't getting any sign. And, you know, the corn's tall right now. They live out kind of on the edge of a river, and then and the rest of the way between there and my house, they're probably eight miles as the crow flies straight across from me. So um, they were 
you know, figured he just went down the river and took a run and he just, he's been gone for like 28 days now and they've had a couple sightings and yeah. one day we, I don't know, we lapped these three, four mile sections looking for him and we just can't get him. So he's still going. They saw him last, uh, I think Wednesday, he was not far from home. He kind of comes back and then he, he's, they find him 10 miles away, you know, so. Um, the heat of the day, they were down by where Bill lives, r running up and down the river looking for him. And he just, they get signed and get sighting and they get there within as fast as they can. They can't. So they uh, they called Bill in and Bill came out with his drone. And, and I knew there was some of this stuff. I know like people crop scouting and stuff have these big drones. I got a buddy that's got a huge drone he sprays with. But Bill has the capabilities of taking video from from. 190 200 feet and then getting thermal readings off of that so you know it's finding a needle in the haystack in the middle of a big cornfield so um he came in and got some really cool footage and and uh you know we'll just let you kind of introduce yourself bill and sure. and thank you for coming on and kind of talk about you know how you started with this drone and kind of the little story that we're we're doing now so very good um well, my name is Bill uh, William, or I go by Bill, Bill Dedick, and um, I'm the director for Iowa uh, Drone Search and Rescue. Uh, it's a new uh, organization we're forming, and so we're on our ground stages here. This is funny how this all started. I've been uh, flying drone now for about five years, and I got my uh, uh, FAA drone pilot's license uh, about uh, two years ago. And uh, at that point, uh, the reason I did it was because I do a lot of YouTube videos and that. And if anything is ever monetized, I could get in trouble by flying a drone, a personal drone for commercial commercial purposes. So you got to be really careful with that. Uh, people that fly drone for real estate purposes and different things could really get in trouble without having that commercial license. So... Uh, <laughs> It was funny uh, last year. In fact, it was last fall. We we have a, a home up at the on the north in northeast Iowa, up uh, north of Marquette, Iowa, and uh, we were on the river there, and and somebody lost a dog, and it was being talked about. And my wife looked over at me, and says, "You know, Bill, it sure be nice if you had a a drone that you could go out and find those animals with." <laughs> and she regrets even telling me that because it started a tailspin a, or a, fl a fury. Uh, it's the way I am. I'm type A. Uh, so I started doing research on thermal drones. And I settled in on a drone that would be uh, the investment is around five to $6,000 for it for a single drone, which I'm used to paying $1,300 for, you know, a, a, a commercial, uh, a residential class drone. So, but I made the leap and uh, I've been practicing. Uh, uh, we're winter Texans. We spend, uh, spend the winter down in, in uh, Mission, Texas. And so I flew a lot down there, picked up a searchlight for it. So we can actually search at night, find what we think is the subject that we're looking for. Then we can turn that searchlight on. It's almost like you see the classic movies of helicopter light beams down from above. I have that capability on this little drone. In fact, I can show you the drone if you'd like to see it. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So here is the drone. Um, it, uh, I'll just turn it on so it kind of, kind of highlights it. On the top is a strobe for aircraft, and it will. Uh, it's quite bright. Uh, you get you get your your uh, your landing lights and everything. The front you have a thermal camera. You have a, a wide angle and a telephoto. Uh, I can bring up. Uh, 56x zoom on this thing so i can be flying back in fact i've done parades and different things for for towns where i'm way out away from people and i can zoom in and they they don't even know i'm there it's unbelievable so the eye is indeed in the sky with these things and you can see how it as it flies the the camera stays very stable so what what are the general dimensions in that were for the people that can't Sure. See the, the video. Um, They're just listening. Actually, it, and how much does that weigh? It looks like. There it's, you go. Uh, oh, uh, it's go. it's very light. It's 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 about. Uh, I'm going to say just a pound. Uh, 
So when you look at it from prop tip to prop tip, you're talking about uh, about 20 inches. Um, and width wise, we're talking 16 inch, uh, 16 inches wide. And the thing is about uh, four inches tall. So it's not huge. And what's cool is it folds up and you can put it in the backpack. Uh, I'll shut off the power on it. So you can, you can, the legs or the, the arms fold up. So there is the unit. You can see it with my hand now. Oops, sorry. Yep. So it's uh, quite quite a bit smaller, uh, and it's easily can be packed. And the controller's not much bigger, and it's got a nice video screen on it. And I've actually got the capability of of sending the signal from the controller, where is the pilot view, to a larger monitor. So. Like in the case we were helping Kurt look for his dog, they his team of volunteers was watching the monitor as I was flying, and they flying, and they're the ones that telling me which direction to go because it's very difficult as a pilot. I'm paying attention to other factors, my elevation and everything else, and it's very helpful to have a have a person, a spotter, so, so to speak. Sure. So. I mean, when we talk, you know, you're showing it, and the, the people that are listening, the fact that have, as small as this little drone is, is is the capabilities are twice as much. So it just goes. You know, we talk about dog collars and all that stuff, and and GPS and handheld right. stuff, and our cell phones. It's it's amazing how much technology goes into that, and and the time that you've probably had to spend flying those around. So, so you will go spend five six thousand dollars and and put a, a fancy camera on there, but you know the outcome when you're finding what you're looking for, I'm assuming oh, is, it's extremely is worth, gratifying. It's is extremely gratifying, and and I talked with Chad and Kurt after you did that flight, and I know they were you know they were happy to know that okay he's he's still moving around because we just saw him here like two hours ago, he's out moving. So just the fact that you guys searched multiple patterns and multiple places and did not see him knowing he's okay. He's still alive. He's moving around. Right. Um, I think that was, I think that was kind of helpful for them just for that. So, and uh, you know, flight time, I know Chad said there was a couple times and, and, and we'll have his YouTube uh, link on here for everyone to go look at this video, but you could hear it saying, Hey, I need, I'm at 20% or whatever. I need to turn around, come back and get a new battery. And then right. it automatically it automatically flies back to you and lands where you need right. it to be, correct? Exactly. Correct. Yeah. So here, here, this is the YouTube video. Uh basically I did this for Kurt to help you know validate the missing dog. Um, and here I can go ahead and play a little bit. And I realize some of you are on audio only. Uh yes, come back to the to this uh to the setter tails. And like I said, the link will be there and you can find it. Um, but here, this is the actual drone with the spotlight on top of it. And that, that spotlight will actually uh, go up and down uh, with, with the, the unit. And there's their, there's our missing dog, but I'm going to go ahead and move uh, ahead here. And uh, so just to kind of give you an idea, uh, I'm at 193 feet in the air. And here we spot an anomaly right there, that red. And as we zoom in, you can see it gets real fuzzy as you zoom in. I remember we're 200 foot up in the air and we got this, uh, this buck, you know, uh, eating and not even knowing that we're there. Uh, now his ears, he did end up, uh, we spooked him. Uh, but I, I'll pause the video here. Uh, basically... We set up a grid pattern with the drone, uh, with Kurt. Um, we said, okay, what area do you want me to search in? And we we grid, we made this grid pattern, but I flew this grid manually. Uh, otherwise, it would have we would have run out of battery many, many times. We were trying to get this done before dark. Um, here I can go ahead, move it ahead. Uh, what was remarkable about this, well, like here, uh, here, here's a section of the video 
that we're we're looking through the woods. And obviously, this is a hard time of the year to be searching because of the uh, uh, the canopy, the tree canopy. But here, obviously, there's either a raccoon in here or owls inside the tree. And you can see the thermal signature, and there's the hole. So it was pretty interesting uh, uh, what we what we found there. And there you can see the zoom capability, how I'm zooming out after we've identified what it is. Uh, uh, there, so you can kind of see how you can fly along and you zoom in on things that pique your interest. And what I did, I provided Kurt all the uh, detail, uh, the video here to where he was able to uh, look at this later on and go through all the details. He had the raw footages. So here, this little anomaly here, again, I'm 158 foot up in the air. Uh, this this really raised our confidence level. There you can see how far back we are. Then we zoomed in, and moving ahead here just for proficiency here. Oh, that's a deer bed down. You see that there's a fawn or a deer uh, down in the ground. Oh, there we scared it. So you, it really raised our confidence level that we would be able to find this the missing dog. And we even later on in this video, there's another deer running. There's one there uh, where we were able to actually spot a a bird in a bush at 150 foot up in the air. So that was crazy that we could see that. Um, the later on in the video, I, I guess I have to show you this one. Uh, we are at 10 minutes. So I'm gonna get my there we go. So here we're flying in another area. Uh, this video doesn't display the, the elevation, but basically you can see the red anomalies along this fence row. And there is a deer. Uh, this was a beautiful 10 point deer that was spotted out. So people are using these for drone for, for deer recovery during hunting season. Now there's Pilots out there doing this as a service. I know you can't use it to hunt with. In this case, we aren't out there hunting for animals. We're well, we're hunting for a dog, you know. But so I wanted to share that with you. That that uh, that that's oh, the that's capability cool. is the zoom uh, and all that. And the, the next drone that we're planning on on acquiring for our search and rescue is a. Uh, has 210x zoom, and you can fly it in the rain and in the snow oh, wow. and inclement weather, where this one is a fair weather drone only. So now you leap and you go take everything cost times three, of course. Yeah, and with those videos, the, the first part where you were showing where we saw the deer and the bird and the raccoons, that is close to where Kurt actually lived. That yes. was probably like a mile and a half across the river. And that second one with that bigger deer, that's where we first had the first sighting. And so those are probably six miles apart, and it's pretty rough terrain out there. It's We're in Iowa, or it's hilly there, but he's got two rivers he can cross, uh, multiple places. Uh, one of the big uh, industries for Iowa is, is grain. Um, grain, so it's a, it's a farm to market roads. There's two of them there, hard surface. They hit the ethanol plant uh, on Verfurth Manufacturing. They really make the big grain carts. So there, that dog is, We I think we got him narrowed. He's just running the water. He's staying cool. He's obviously smart enough where he's finding his food. So he's at like almost 30 days now. So I think he, yeah. you know, the talks that the dog can go feral. We think he might have. He just, something spooked him. A coyote running him off from the lawn or something. And, you yeah. know, and, and so it, it's a bad deal. And. But yeah. it was great of you to come out and do that search and rescue. And I have a feeling if, if this goes on again, if they get a good sighting, them, you'll probably get another call. And, and I'm going to run over there and help, too. It's just it's been every time every time that we see them, I'm either I'm either close or I can't get there. So but, you know, there's a lot of applications use this drone for besides just looking for somebody's lost oh, dog. Yeah. And um, can you kind of explain some of the different applications, do you, you know, 
what are you what are you searching for do you help out with law enforcement or or you kind of just do your own thing you know let's kind of explain some of that i i've uh i actually haven't taken the time yet because i just got this drone this spring and we tend to be busy in our i'm i am retired so i'm busier now than what i was when i worked but uh it it uh we have volunteer fire departments that have interest that i've talked to and i just haven't taken the step to get myself formally set up with them my name is dropped with a few so if there's a problem or if they have something they need if they need me i'll i'll be at their beck and call uh, the the drone is used uh for power line inspections uh you, you uh use thermal in fact i'm a retired uh I sold a, I had a Generac dealership, Generac generators, and I used a handheld thermal camera on that uh, to, to inspect switch gear for hot spots for wires that were overloaded because they'd be overheated and a very easy and fast way to inspect electrical panels. So that was my, and I got my certification in, in thermal imaging way back years ago. And I carried that experience forward into this drone. The drones used for power line inspection, uh, they use the thermal camera for that, looking for hot spots, insulators that are breaking down. Um, they use them for solar panel inspections. Uh, you can fly a, a solar farm and you, solar panels when they're operational and you got to do this in the bright sunny day when the solar panels are working and generating electricity, a solar panel that's not or cell within a solar panel would be black, it would be cold. So you would very easily be able to spot out uh, uh, defective solar panels. And I've got some YouTube videos showing that as well on my channel. Um, you use it for uh, uh, insulation inspection. Uh, in just a, a, in Mission, Texas, I have a, a, a home down there and we had this the rafter spray foamed I actually flew this drone in the attic because I know fire departments can use this drone to fly inside to search for people. Uh, they, they're made to be, they don't have to be on GPS, these better drones. And so I'm flying inside my attic, inspecting my insulation for, for cold spots. And I, and I recorded all that and I had the insulation contractor come back and spray foam places that he missed. Would have never seen it with human eye. So it's just, it's crazy what you can do with these things. Uh, last, the last thing was kind of interesting. My pole barn uh, was leaking and it was an insulated pole barn. And we easily found the screws that were, that were loose and out and water got in on the screw holes and you were able to see that cold spot on that roof. So that's, <laughs> Well, I can see there'd be a lot of application, especially on the law enforcement side. And, uh, uh, you know, like a, a missing child, you know, a child just wandered away or uh, someone, an, an elderly person that they're trying to find out in a cornfield or whatever. So, I mean, that would be the kind of thing when you get geared up and you kind of you're everybody knows that you're you're out there. And hopefully this this episode of the podcast will help people have that awareness, at least that, sure. you know, where you are and what you're doing. But that would be something you'd be subject to being called out to assist on a on a situation like that with law enforcement or fire departments or whatever. I would suspect. Right. We've created a Facebook page, uh, Iowa Drone Search and Rescue, and there's only 38 members in it right now. It's a new page, but uh, what we're going to do is start collecting uh, what capabilities the members have to to assist in search and rescue, and so it basically would be we'd use that to be able to deploy forces and communicate needs in that. And uh, I would appreciate anybody, especially with dogs, uh, it's, it's going to go beyond drones. If, if there's a, a dog team even available or somebody has one that's got a good nose for searching, I mean, why not? Let's get it. Let's get it. At least identify what resources are available human and equipment wise and animals that can assist um i did get involved in uh uh in the um uh in the iowa um uh crime stoppers uh cedar valley crime stoppers 
uh, here in the Waterloo Cedar Falls area. I got instilled in that uh, after the uh, the girls got abducted in Evansdale several years ago. And so I've become personal friends with Drew Collins, the father of uh, one of the missing children that was later on found, uh, you know, killed. And uh, uh, my heart went out to him. And that's what's got me to contribute my personal time is not just animals. It's to help people in need. Yeah, just knowing, having that know all, know all of what you know. If you're what you're looking for to find it is, I mean, back when I was a kid, a woman would lose her wet, wedding ring in the grass, and you'd be out there on your hands and knees, and then finally, hey, this guy's got a metal detector in, right? And they go find it, you know. So, you know, you guys have pretty much a coalition throughout the state of Iowa now, where if something like a dog goes missing or God forbid a child or, or a family member, or, you know, you hear of people getting in car wrecks in the middle of the night and they get ejected from the car and you got people running around out in the cornfield trying to find them to what find better them. than you be able to put your, your drone up and within 10 minutes of them being there and going, Hey, he's right here. Get to him. You right. Know? So, uh, what are like, you're obviously you have to keep up with <laughs> the technology. So, you know, is there funding you guys, is it all self-funded? Are you going to start, you know, like a fund page and like, what is like, you're going to obviously, once this keeps growing, you're going to obviously have to keep going bigger and better. And, right. And I know you guys are looking at that new cam, you know, a new drone with a new camera, but you know, what do you guys do for, as far as fundraising and, and all that? We, we are so new. We haven't even started that yet. Um, in fact, uh, Kurt uh, offered me money for assisting with this and time spent. I said, no, I won't accept it. Uh, let me get myself organized first. Uh, we did just create a, a nonprofit. We we're a 501 uh, what, C3 uh, uh, corporation now. Uh, we just did that just uh, two weeks ago. So we're fresh. Uh, we're new. Um, right now, all the equipment is out of my pocket. I'm funded. Um, I, In fact, I'm I'm just ordering a new drone, another drone, but not a thermal, but one that has a better visual capability and more focused and crisp because they still have their applications as well. Uh, I'm hoping that because of the expense of thermal drones that there are pilots out there, there's organizations in Iowa already that are doing this uh, deer recovery service. I want to get them involved It's and try to convince them it's not all about just money. It's about human compassion and helping people find find these animals or these people uh, that are outside of the business or the commercial side. So I'm hoping to get more uh, feed there because thermal drones are so expensive, there's not a lot of them around. And like for me, I leave for Texas in the winter. Well, the winter is the perfect time to look for things on thermal because there's right. no tree canopy. But I won't be around in in the Midwest for that portion. But. So is that kind of what you're looking for to expand your your uh, coalition with other pilots and people that have other skill sets? What what are some of the skill sets you're looking for to to join your group? Uh, drone pilots, um, people that have the capability of walking and searching. Uh, I'm hoping to get some two way radios set up. I'm a ham radio operator. That's where my my YouTube channel is called W0GEN. That's why it's called that, because that's a ham radio call sign. Uh, so we will have equipment that way, but you still need to have bodies, people that are healthy. I'm getting old and fat, and it's hard for me to, to go and trudge through the, the timbers and the brush and that. Uh, people with kayaks that can... Uh, uh, or canoes that can run a river stream and look inside the look in the woods. Uh, people with UTVs, you know, you name it. You think about search and rescue. It's just about any resource. Uh, but yes, drone pilots, uh, dog teams, those would be two of the top criteria. What's uh, and we kind of hit on this a little bit, but some interesting cases that you've been involved in, maybe in Texas or here, but what's what's one that really pops into your head of one that you really got gratified uh, being involved in that? Is there one that you, you remember the best? Well, 
this is such a new venture for us. I don't have that ultimate gratification yet of a, okay. of a find. Uh, Kurt was one of the first calls I went out on. Okay. I have not been actively advertising. Uh, Kurt uh, put a poster up. Yes, he had an award, a reward on his dog. I called him and says, I'm not going to look for a reward money. If we find this dog, I want to know that I helped you find it. And that would be the, the limit of it. And I says, let's go do it. And that's what we did. And I think Kurt will attest to that, that sincerity on my part, that I'm not looking to make a buck. Right. Um, it, it will obviously, as this thing expands, there would be expenses incurred that we'd be looking for donations back or, or, or flat fees on travel and things like that. Uh, because it's, you know, it's, that's, it, it does take resources to do this. Oh, absolutely. So you're really in the early stages oh, of, very of early. this whole process. I mean, obviously Kurt's situation probably was one of the first right. uh, examples of let's, let's yes. use the capability and, and, and see what we can do to, to help you out as opposed to your advertising saying here, here's what we can do, uh, you know, for X amount of dollars. You're right. more about just doing it as a, as a service to the community right now. And that's uh uh, that's uh, that's tremendous. Um, so, how can people help right now? If so, if obviously you've got you've got a charitable organization and uh, a nonprofit, right. can people donate to something like that? Or are you Sorry. Are, you, are you too early to really have um, that in place yet? People can donate to it. Uh, all I can do is promise that 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 donation. And I just brought up that poster, so that was got me distracted there. So there you go. Um, Hang on a second here. There we go. So the, um, uh, you know, we're, we're getting, we'll, we'll take donations, of course, and this is a tax write-off for anybody making that donation. So that's uh, one nice thing about it, and that was one of the reasons why we did it. So, and we'll be responsible for that money. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, a donation directly to uh, to us is better than using um, GoFundMe and some of those other resources because they take such a percentage of that giving, you know. So we're not going to set up a GoFundMe page. Uh, we initially we're not planning on that because it's expensive to do that. I don't believe in giving third party companies a chance to profit when you when you need you know that. Uh, the, yeah, the next drone that we want to have available to us is in a fifteen dollars to $20,000 range for an investment. Um, I basically have about 12000 of my own resources that I've put into this so far, and uh, any donations would be just very, we'd be very grateful. Yeah, and, and, and I know with the reward that they have to find him, that would have taken a big chunk out of it, so... You know, I 100% commend you for just telling no. Let's just find the dog, and and I know both Kurt and Chad appreciate that. You know, they've worked uh, they've worked a lot of put a lot of time in their lives for for this breeding that they have with these dogs, yep. and they spend every waking moment just like we do. Oh yeah, you know, we yeah. spend. Oh yeah, I mean, it's a family member. It's a family member. Out it's there. A family member. It, it, absolutely, and, it's a child. You know, yeah. and, and his wife had gone through some health issues with with some cancer and. Yes. And, you know, that puppy was growing up with, you know, when he was growing up, that's, that got her the strength through. And I've been to his place of business and I've seen the dog there and, and, you know, it's just, you know, that's, you know, it's just something that it's nice of them to, to do this. And, and another resource that we can help it, anybody wants to help, they can help. And, you know, some people aren't capable of getting out and walking, but if, you know, right. if you, if you have a bum foot or something, you can at least get up there be the eyes in the sky and see it. And oh, I, like I think said. it'd be interesting to have him follow us around with the dog sometime and see how many yeah. birds our dogs run yeah. well, I'd probably do you know, that. We, 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 had a, we had some drone experiences with the more of the residential side, and uh, it's amazing what you can what you it can is. see from 400 feet, you know, which is kind of... Absolutely. Is, uh, that, I, I'm sure that's the same as like the maximum. You know, not, you're not supposed to get any higher. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, legally, you feet, can't find any higher than yes, 400 feet. Yes. Then the and other even thing. Like, even sorry. like you said, 100, 200 feet, though, it's amazing what you can see. And the, the other thing you have to respect as a pilot 
I can't fly near airports. There's you have to do your research of the area you're going to fly in. And if it's a restricted airspace, which there's a lot of restricted airspace around, I would have to put in a request to the FAA to re, to allow us to fly the drone in that area. Um, the other thing is that, you know, it's in town. A lost pet in town would be very difficult to use a drone. To it's a possibility, but you know, it's it's more in in the area if they're in the field or out in the cornfield. Right, be a lot easier. Yeah, and that that's you know that's uh, you know that's why you know we you help people is for how, that. How many uh, how stuff. many how many thermal drone pilots like you do you, are there in Iowa? Do you have any any idea how many of licensed pilots there are right now in Iowa? You know, I do not have that data. Um, I know there's, like I said, a couple companies uh, that are doing this uh, as, you know, for for uh, deer recovery. I've yet to seek them out, um, and uh, I've I'm a member of many Facebook groups. There's a Des Moines UAV club. Uh, I have yet to put out a, and I probably should do that. You're you're instilling me to go ahead and start a survey with them to find out who's got thermal. I, I know another pilot up in Algona area that has thermal, and I know he would be more than happy to help. Uh, so there, there's a few out there, but I can't even give you numbers at this no, point. I was curious. Yeah. And obviously, if you go to Texas in the, in the winter, then you're looking for someone like yourself that would have coverage here in Iowa exactly. if, if needed, and they would just be that good. Be on call. Person. That's right. right. Okay. Yes, so, I, Absolutely. So you you've brought up like the deer recovery a few times. Um, I know what I know what it what it's about. I'm we're you know we're all big hunters, but kind of explain what they're doing that. So are they just you know are they somebody shoots a deer and they can't find it? You go up there before it gets obviously it's probably difficult in the winter in the fall when it gets cool at night and then cold all day. It's probably a little bit difficult. You have to be Johnny on the spot. I would assume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously thermal signatures uh if a deer is laying in the snow it's going to cool down rather quickly so you need to move fairly rapidly uh, i know these deer recovery services i believe i mean they're they're commercial i i i've heard as much as a thousand dollars i think it depends how far they have to travel and and all that and i'd imagine most of the people that have this are probably doing other things for jobs so they may not be able to come out until after work, after their work. So, uh, but again, I have not done my research to figure out what they actually do. That was not of my interest to do that type of service. So I haven't really paid much attention to it other than to get that resource committed to support, you know, on search and rescue. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, like I said, we can get the word out and people will know that you're out there, Bill. And what you uh, what you and your group are going to be doing here in the near future, and so uh, and to the law enforcement agencies in the, in the area, and they'll get to know uh, you. And as you have time, obviously, the, I'm sure the you'll be in all those uh, reference uh, references, uh, having been in that world for thirty some years in, in a past life that I had. I know that those kinds of uh, people like yourself, those kinds of individuals, are are logged and you know where okay if we need a drone right. who is it and how to get a hold of and that's Bill that's right all that kind of thing and that's what i want to have at a minimum sure is just a, a a central point a resource for people to call upon so let's change gears here just a little bit but uh so did you grow up in iowa i presume that you did yes uh oh. originally from Trer, uh okay. south little town south of waterloo and born and raised in down there and uh so I worked for 30, 34 years with Deere and Company, uh, oh, sure. uh, and I retired from John Deere in 2008, and I also had a Generac generator business. I sold that in 2017, and I at that point, I fully retired, but I'm, uh, like I said, then I got my ham radio license and, you know, all that good stuff. I, I'm, a, I'm a retired master electrician as well, so uh, I've got a lot like of... like you're going to just sit around. It doesn't you're right. Like to me. I can't so, sit around. Uh, so you see so growing up in Trail, were there any birds when you were a kid down there? Oh, yeah. I used to oh, go yeah. pheasant hunting. It seemed like there were a lot more birds down there then than when there is nowadays. But oh, I'm sure there I, were. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there were. But uh, See, I'm into 3D printing, so 
I've got a 3D printer sitting there in the background. I got Man. one down in Texas, so it oh keeps me God. going. <laughs> but I don't yeah. print guns. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you keep buying drones and make your wife mad, you at least looks like you have plenty plenty to do out in the shop. I you might have to find room for a bed in case you really yeah. buy something you're not supposed to. But <laughs> but you know, we, we appreciate you coming on and, and explaining this and Yeah, and, that's fantastic. You know, I, mean, anybody, I had no idea. You know, Somebody anybody like in the area of that Waterloo area that could be listening, Wes is still he's still <laughs> he's still running. He's uh yeah. we think we hoping, think that dog is up uh northwest corner of cedar falls now it's almost yeah, getting so, in the city right so he, all on the he, river bottoms he's about 30 miles from from my place so about 25 miles from where he uh he came from so he's on the move i don't know what he's looking for but he's definitely uh he's not we you know they actually brought in a you know they were trying every avenue they could we drove around and i was standing on top of the pickup whistling and hollering and looking through the you know, every little waterway within four miles of the last sighting. And we were hanging flyers up everywhere. I mean, these flyers, we had them in hog buildings, you know, and, and every passerby, they handed one. And we looked and looked and looked. And I know Wednesday when they saw him last, it was like 104 degrees. And Kurt and yeah. Chad just each picked a a park on the north and south sides of where between they saw him and they walked and really? in that wow. heat and along the river. And they found tracks and... They've got game cameras set up all over, buckets of food, just trying right. to get somewhere. We're like, okay, here's some food. Here's my bed. I can smell dad. I can smell Chad. I can smell mom. Maybe I yep. should, maybe they are looking for me and just kind of get his brain back into wanting to come right. home. So, you know, yeah. and, interesting. And, and I'm sure if anybody, you know, listens anywhere in the, in the world that's listening to us, there's, there's more people like Bill out there that are willing to help and, and, I would imagine there's a lot of drones. It's become very popular. So with thermal, so this is a good way. If you, you know, even I've been out in the field and forgot to charge a collar and it went bad. And it's like the dog just keeps going, doesn't care. You know, they don't know like, well, he said it and I didn't listen. So, and, but it, and you don't have to have thermal. Yeah. You know, uh, these drones have 4k video on them. You can do a video clip of a wooded area and and then play it back later looking for things that have been running through the woods yeah and one question i had with the thermal is it a certain temperature so you know when you were flying it a couple of weeks ago it was like 85 degrees right um, the sun had obviously was kind of it was overcast day so it was probably a good time to do that but what is the heat signatures it's picking up do you have a setting you can set it yeah. at or yes okay. you can you can actually zero in the thermal setting setting on those cameras to where I can say I only want to look for things between 90 degrees and 115 degrees. So only things in that temperature range turn red. And that's kind of what you saw in that video where we were we were greatly selective on what were we looking for uh for temperature. Yeah. Uh and obviously on a hot day it makes it a lot more difficult to spot out. But we did prove the concept. It worked. We, Like I said, we even found a bird in a bush, you know, a small bird. And that was just unbelievable at 150 foot. That really raised uh, our confidence level so much. We felt, you know what, if Wes is out there, we'll find it with this thing. And that's where it gave us some new vigor to go after it. And by the way, that dog's wearing a blue collar. That yep. photo... With the red collar, just to emphasize it's a it's he's got a blue collar on. Yeah, and I'm sure he's uh I'm sure he's probably he's he's very much in need of a bath by now. So. Oh yeah, yeah. And I have confidence we'll get him. And once one of these days, he's just gonna say, you know, if he's getting close to a town, he's gonna go to somebody's house and they're gonna get him. So they're real confident. Well, and I think the more people that hear about it and know about yeah. us being out there, the more uh, yes. absolutely chances there are somebody reporting and, some and, information and about him. Hopefully, Kurt and Chad are, are close friends of mine, and and I haven't known them for long, but you know we we're, uh, we hunt together, and and they're both big hunters and dog trainers. So um, any way I can do to help them, and and if this is the best yeah, way I can do absolutely. it, this is how I want to do it. Let's get him home if we can. Yeah, let's get absolutely. let's get that boy absolutely. home, and and uh, I know there's. Uh, there's some people at his house uh, very, very excited for his return. So, and, yep. and Bill, once again, we, we appreciate you. And, and we, 
I may, we may just have to have you come follow us with a dog sometime. It'd be kind we'll of have neat. to do that. That'd be kind of fun. Before you had, before you snowbird south, and it would be kind of interesting. I mean, we could use it for dog training if we know, you know, if he can get over that field and we know where birds are at, and these dogs are passing them. We got to figure out why. Maybe I don't right. want to know that, but yeah. it'd be kind of just neat to uh, to see that. And and Bill, once again, let's let's repeat, you know, where they can kind of see the videos on youtube and in your facebook page let's get some more awareness out for you for you guys too no i appreciate that um uh and thank you very much for this uh podcast uh iowa drone search and rescue uh if you search facebook you'll find uh that we have a group uh, it's a private group we will accept uh most people that want in there we do watch for people and make sure we don't have scammers and things like that of course uh, we have, we, we also have, um, uh, I lost my train of thought here. <laughs> uh, we, we are setting up email. We have support at Iowa drone, sar.org support at Iowa drone, sar.org. And also bill at Iowa drone, sar.org is a couple ways to 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 reach reach us um and then uh let's see i think that was it the facebook page the um and your youtube is is w oh i'm sorry zero yes. g e n and that's yeah. his youtube page and he's got a bunch of cool videos on there and and you actually on the video that he played with uh looking for west you could hear the commentary of everybody and and you could just tell that you know it, it that subject has been pretty low and low and glum for That's a while right. now. So, and then you see something, it's it, absolutely it, it really giving them hope that, Hey, he's still out there. He's moving around and, you know, of course yeah. the, the human sightings, but that, you know, that that's keeping them, this is keeping them going. And I'm sure that would help with families with anything that's missing. So. Yeah. And I do, I do ask, you, you know, go on to search YouTube for W zero G E N whiskey zero golf echo November. Uh, and then please subscribe. Uh, the subs by subscribing, you actually, at some point, we will receive advertiser funding. But we have a whole diverse array of videos out there. I've been doing them for years. Uh, and so by subscribing, you'll get notified when we put a new video up. So, yeah, absolutely. Yep, I've seen the last couple you've been doing. So, and, uh, and once again, and, you know, just for... Uh, our listeners and and for the chase chase brothers that you know we appreciate what you did for them and yeah we we'll, have, you know, we'll have some links we'll too, have all our links guys. will be in the descriptions on on all our uh, where we play this so we uh again we thank you for joining us thank you bill well, thank you for having me thank you you know that's that just shows you the goodness of people and you know just helping you know some people oh it's just a dog well it's a special dog to 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 my friends so Yes, uh, absolutely. thanks, Bill, for for doing that. And once again, you can see all his stuff on his YouTube yeah, page. Yeah, it's and just Facebook, the uh, so. just the other community applications that they may be able to help in uh, in their their willingness to you know want to uh, share their talents with the community and and a community in need, whether it's trying to find a dog, a lost child, uh, you know, a lost elder elder or whatever it could be. And so, uh, you know, kudos to those guys for. Yeah doing that and uh out of check them out yeah, check out them out and pocket. get some more information so, and if it looks, sounds to me like it's a it'd be a good uh, good thing to support if you uh, would would have an interest in doing that so anyway great cop topic great uh, episode uh, you know I, like i said some of these come along we like to kind of do things that are different this was a little different i had never heard i never had any idea that there was this kind of opportunity or or this uh, resource that was out there if you needed to uh, to find a dog or something like this so it's good to know yeah would Quick that help you in your law enforcement career back in the day you think yeah you know we've had applications that were uh, certainly we've, we've had uh, children that we've been trying to find you know and you get this time of year especially in a, in, a, in so many cornfields that we have and you know we've we've actually had large areas that needed to be searched and really what, what only thing at that time that technology we had to do was was the o on foot you know yeah. human eyes and so yeah. you know you just it took longer. It took more people, and you, you de never covered the ground probably as 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 good as as this uh, equipment can do. So it's yeah. it's great that 
uh, that uh, they have it. And yes. it's close by here in Waterloo, Iowa, which yeah. is kind of nice that we have somebody that's, that's close to us that has this, uh, this opportunity for us if we need it. And speaking of law enforcement, we're just a little over a month away from the heroes i do i've got i've got 20 spots left out there for any of you law enforcement uh retired and or current you know it doesn't matter if you want to come down and kill some pheasants with this guy right here he's going to be guiding out there for us and uh, it's going to be a great day a lot of a lot of different events not only the pheasant hunt but uh go to the lynn county uh, pheasants forever website it gives you more information and you can uh, register online. It's pretty easy and simple to do. So we'd love to have a few more people out there if we can get them. Yeah, yep. And it's a great cause, and and, and it's all about the sponsors that sponsor that. So I am ex I'm excited. That'll be the first hunt in the field for me this year, I, I would assume. And and with all the puppies and it's gonna be, <laughs> getting yeah, everybody in uh, shape, and now the yeah, weather's and, getting and cooled October down. October could I'm, still be a little warm that early in October, yep. but we hope for a good day. And uh you know, and that's why we we limit the hunts to two and a half hours or so yeah. because of dogs and, and making sure that we don't uh, stress the, the dogs as well as our guides. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good day. And uh, But, you know, uh, we had mentioned on this this episode about subscribing. Bill had mentioned subscribing to uh, to their YouTube channel, and we would ask you to do same, the same thing with uh, Setter Tales uh, podcast channel as well. Uh, give us some reviews. Let us know what you, you like, uh, what you'd like to hear about. Um, this guy's been involved in upland uh, hunting and, and dog training for many years, and I've been around the block a few times, and so there's probably most things that we generally know a little bit about, and we'd love to help you out with uh, any of the needs that you have. So, And we, we'll let it go till next time, and we'll have another fantastic episode i'm sure when we see you again i know we've got some in the in the wings i'm not going to reveal them yet but we got some good stuff coming up so hang in there with and us and, and maybe and, i'll bring a puppy sometime too there you go you got two left right three three left three, three left three so. great dogs nothing nothing prettier than an english setter puppy you know that so <laughs> and you know what if you everybody out there if you get a chance take somebody hunting keep their nose in the wind <laughs>